Hello and welcome to the video. This is my overview and review of this thing here. This is the GTEC Mizar S. Now there's two versions of the Mizar. There's the basic one and there's this S1 which has all of the tricks and upgrades already installed on it. It's kind of like an Ender 3 with all the bits added. Now I'm a fan of 3D printing. Those of you that watch my series will know that I've been 3D printing for about seven or eight years now and it has become a key part of the hobby. The VTOL building that I'm doing at the moment, all the brackets to hold things like the motors on the arms and everything else are all designed by myself and printed in plastic and it makes fabrication incredibly easy. Now I have a project that I'm about to start where having another printer alongside my trusty Ender 3 is going to be great because it will halve the amount of print time that I have to have for bigger prints so stay tuned for what that's going to be soon. Now GTEC, I think that's how you say it, or GE Tech, I'm not sure, is one of those printer brands that I know very well. My first ever 3D printer was a Rostock style 3D printer from GTEC and it worked quite well. And it's fun to see how far everything has progressed and get one of their latest and greatest printers in to try out. So the main headlines for this, this one has an auto leveling function and it's dead easy to navigate through the touch interface that's at the front. There is also a manual leveling available. Uh, it is a fixed hot bed, but it does have a magnetic plate that you can take off. There's no complicated screw nut adjustments. Everything's operated on the screen. So once you've got it out of the box and set up, more on that in a moment, then the printer's pretty much ready to go with a simple calibration routine. Dual Z-axis screws on the back with a separate motor driver for each. Now, this means that there is very, very tight tolerances on the Z-axis or the height axis when you're printing, which means there shouldn't be any patterns in the printing. The really interesting thing with this is this has silent drivers. It is incredibly quiet. The most noise seems to come from the fan that's cooling the drivers that are part of the bed inside. The actual moving itself, there isn't those kind of robotic, kind of robocop noises as it's moving around. It is incredibly quiet with just the noise of the fan wearing away. RGB light on the hot end to light the printing process. It isn't particularly bright, but I found it handy just to keep an eye on making sure that the first layer is adhering properly and the prints off this are absolutely beautiful. This is one of the demo prints that comes on the SD card, and as you can see, this is default settings. I've not done anything to this. I haven't cleaned it up or anything. This is how it came off the print bed. It's printed vertically, and you can just see how accurate and how fine the finish is from this Mizar S. Specifications for this uh, has auto leveling, as I said. Build volume is 255 by 255 by 260 millimeters high. The printer itself is 36.2 by 37.7 by 65.3 millimeters, and it's a pretty heavy beast. It's about nine kilograms, about 19 and a half pounds. Nozzle diameter on this is 0.4 millimeters, which is what I prefer. Layer thickness 0.1 to 0.2. Printing accuracy is plus or minus 0 0.01 millimeters which is pretty normal and it is a single nozzle does have a magnetic removable flexible print platform that's going to help get your prints off and it does have a double metal gear extruder the extruder on this seems to be very very nice indeed and there is also a filament out protector before it so if you're printing and your filament runs out then the printer will pause so that you can reload the filament and you can carry on without losing the entire print there is quick belt tension adjustment although as it came here it was perfect out of the box and it does have that beautiful touchscreen interface which makes navigation and set up a piece of cake in terms of building the thing and unboxing it, uh, the packaging is excellent. The box is huge and again, it is very heavy. Even if you get bumped in transport, I don't think you're gonna have a problem. In the top tray are the manuals. They're nice and glossy and full color stuff and the warranty cards. And then also in the top tray are things like your power cables, your spool holder and a mouse mat. Does anyone use them anymore? Once you're under the top tray, things get interesting. The gantry and the base plate are all connected via a series of cables, so you can't just pull them out one at a time. The way I did it is I just slit the end of the box and hit 
slid the whole thing out. You really need an extra pair of hands for this to get the foam away from everything and to not put too much tension on those cables that are connecting the two pieces together. It would have been nice, I think, for there to be kind of some kind of multi-plug that would have kept them separate. It would have made snapping everything together an awful lot easier. The gantry with the print head is held in place by four large bolts and you get all the tools with the kit as well. So it isn't particularly tricky to get all set up out the box. In terms of leveling, there are two modes, auto and manual. I would use auto, it seems to work very well. Click on auto level and what it'll do is it will go through and test the level height in nine positions on the hotbed and it will do that automatically you just don't have to touch a thing and when it's finished it'll tell you that it's all done the only thing you have to do to start it is you do have to press the nozzle in because the nozzle can detect when it's touching something so the little tool that comes in the kit is perfect for that once that's done the only other job you have to do to be getting ready for print is to check the z height the little offset then again you click on z offset It'll move to the middle of the bed and then you can move it with the up and down increments so that it just starts to touch on a single piece of paper. I use post-it notes here and that will get everything dialed in. And then when you say save, you're going to be ready to print. In terms of the setup in Cura, there is a document that I got from GTech for the printer itself with the settings and the basic start stop G code. There's also a profile for printing plastic on it and I've imported that too when I've been playing with it here. I had trouble getting the filament to adhere to the bed, so I re-ran the leveling lots and lots of different times, played with the height adjustment until I turned the printing speed way down to about 10 to 15 millimeters for the first layer, and then maximum of 15 to 20 millimeters for the rest of the print. Printing PET on this is easy. Prints from the SD card worked fine, showing me the printer was set up okay. I just needed to figure out how to recreate those settings in Cura, and that's something that I'm even now still playing with, try, trying to dial them in to make them bulletproof. The prints off the printer, as I've already said, are absolutely stunning. The quality is absolutely top notch, so I can't wait to get it so that all the Cura bits and pieces are going to give me prints like this reliably every time, because the printer itself is very capable of some really high quality printing. The thing I'm still working on is getting it to print PETG. I love to print PETG. It's one of the things that I print an awful lot here. I've tried different print bed surfaces, different hot end and bed temperatures, different PET filaments, different printer speeds and Z offsets. I've spent over 10 hours with this printer when I first got it, trying to get it to print PETG successfully but it took me a while to find the magic settings for the printer. I emailed GTEC about this and they suggested a 100 degree C bed with masking tape on it to get it to work. I tried the tape that I had, which was white stuff, got a little cooked. So in the end, I bought some of the good old fashioned blue painter's tape, which is a 3D printer's best friend and used that. And that was the trick along with a really, really low print speed. 10 millimeters a second, blue painter's tape, nice hot bed i was using 60 70 degrees c and it, you can get it to adhere so what are my thoughts about this well i like the extra nozzles in the kit there's lots of extra pieces that you get in there so as the nozzles wear out or you want to change them you've got the spares and you've got lots of tools things like the spatula for getting prints off the print bed things like a pair of little tweezers there's loads of nice things in there i like the led light in the print head it really helps you see what's going on uh, it can either be strobing different colours or white. Um, I just wish it was a little bit brighter and there was maybe a couple of them. Uh, it's easy in darker conditions for it to be enough illumination to see what's going on. But on brighter days, you end up reaching for a small flashlight anyway. I like the idea of the filament detector. So it will pause printing if you run out of plastic. And the printing itself does seem very accurate. It feels very solid with those twin Z-axis motors and screws, and it does seem to really help with precision and accuracy on the print. Two tension screws for the Y and X belt tension adjustments in the kit, so if you wanted to manually change that, you absolutely can. Again, I've had this for quite a few weeks now, and it hasn't needed anything changing. Once I had it all dialed in with blue painter's tape on the print bed, it's been fab. 
This is extremely quiet in operation. I'm guessing it's using those super quiet TMC 2208 drivers. It is incredibly quiet. It's one of those things that you could have running overnight for a big print. And with the exception of the fan, you're probably not even going to realize it's running. I like the auto level feature for the bed that works reliably and is brilliant for people who want to get into 3D printing and want to get a printer like this. And it also allows for much larger prints with a larger print area. Also, another thing to comment on is there is lots of cool stuff on the SD card, including video tutorials. So if you get one of these, the SD card comes with it in the box, along with an SD card reader, believe it or not, for your computer. But we'll have a look on that SD card, copy it all onto your computer. There's some really good tutorials there about how you set everything up. But I have had trouble printing PETG and those pesky settings to get it all working reliably. The test prints I've managed here, as you've seen, do show that printing PETG is possible, but it needs some playing with on your slicer to work well. There should be more videos and settings documents to show how you get the prints that came on the card as demo prints set up and how that's all done. GE Tech do provide their own slicing software on the SD card, and maybe that's the trick. But I love Cura. I would love G Tech to be able to tell me exactly how I need to set the G Tech pieces up so that it prints like it does for the demos on the SD card. It's an excellent printer for new enthusiasts, so this level of detail with step by step instructions should be covered. Apart from that, the only other gripe I've got is that potentially there could be wear inside the filament detector. It's only plastic. Once you've put you know, a couple of thousand yards of filament through that, it might start to wear a little bit. But maybe a copper in a, in a lining or something would help with that. And the spool holder is for thinner spools. So I have some of the 80 millimeter thick ones, the larger ones here from people like Filamentive. Unfortunately, they won't fit, although I have designed an extension. But if you want that design, just pop me a comment down here and I'll make it available. So finally, should I get one? Well, this is, as I said at the beginning, kind of an Ender 3 V2 with all of the upgrades already. The auto level and the prints are excellent. And it's very easy for someone new to get to grips with it by following the videos on the SD card manual and get printing with PET. Recommended settings and print speed for your slicer of choice should be easier to find and using the printer for other filaments that are advertised in the listing, things like PETG and ABS, should be a lot easier. The problem for GE Tech is that when this printer is compared to something like the Ender 3 V2, which I also have and is a fantastic printer, this is costing well over twice the cost of that other one. Now, all those extra benefits you get on here, the double Z screws, the touch interface, and things like the auto leveling, is it worth twice the price when I'm having such a problem printing things like PETG? Interestingly, I did pull out my Ender 3 V2, fired it up, just checked the bed was level again, and then tried a quick print with exactly the same filament that I was struggling with on the Mizar S, and surprise, surprise, it printed perfectly. So I hope that GE Tech put a lot more effort into making this as easy to use as a printer that costs less than half of the price of this one, because it could be a fantastic printer for those coming into the 3D printing part of the hobby. With all the extra things, if it was just set up right and it was easier to set up in slicers and work better with more complicated filaments, it would be perfect. So I hope that's something that they address quickly. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.